Awesome, that's going. So that's really cool. I think it's a, such an awesome day to be here. I, um, Kohai is getting baptised and Teresa and it's just cool. It's cool to be a part of. Um, I'm just talking about living in the present tonight, or today, sorry. And um, I think it's something that we all kind of sometimes forget to do, to live in the now, the here and the now, because there's so much going on. And um, I think what John shared earlier about like those feelings that come across us as believers sometimes, I think we can all kind of resonate with that in some ways. Um, but I want to talk to you today about living in the present and being in the here and now. And um, yeah, because I feel like if we think about life, it's like a roller coaster sometimes. You've got your ups and your downs, and sometimes you're just speeding around and you're going on these, you know, topsy turvy things. And you've got people who respond to life differently. So if you go to a theme park and you see someone jump on a roller coaster, you've got your daredevil people who are just like, yeah, you know, and they're like, we just want to go as fast as we can on the highest one. And then you've got the other person who's holding on for dear life, scared and praying. And like, they might not have believed in God before, but they do now, like that kind of <laughs> approach to life. And then you've got people who are just kind of cruising along and enjoying the moment. And it's like, you know, I think this year for myself as well, it's been a bit of a roller coaster year. But um, I'm here to sing a new song, you know. The psalmist said, let's sing a new song to the Lord. Um, and it's about leaving the past behind and being in the present, really. He's singing a new song to God. Like, I might have been through that, but here I am now. So we're living in the present. And being, like being, not just existing, but being in this present moment. Um, so first of all, we'll talk about a few things that might rob us of the present. And quite often... Our past can rob us of the here and now, of this moment that God's given us. You know, um, there's that scripture that says, Today is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's one of those sermons that, oh, sorry, scriptures that everybody knows. And in some ways, we kind of just let it fall over deaf ears. But it's truth. Like today, right now, right here, God has made this day. And what the person was saying is, I will rejoice. He's making a choice to rejoice in the day that God has made. And I wonder how many of us let the days just go by, you know? And we don't actually stop and take the time to say, I'm going to rejoice in today. I'm going to enjoy today because this is the day that God has made, you know? So our past can rob us of our present. So past mistakes, Past mistakes can be those things that we bring into today. So if we've gone to sleep and we felt like we had a bad day and we don't sort it out with God, and then we wake up the next morning, we bring those things into today sometimes. And so you wake up and already before the day started, before you've had a chance to even do anything, you've already got this like sense of glum, down, you know, you, there's no purpose for the day. You're just like, oh, why am I even here kind of thing? And it's like... The Bible says that the enemy comes to rob, kill, and destroy. So anything that's trying to rob you of your present peace, of this present time, of this present moment, doesn't come from God. God gives peace. And so, because we know all that as Christians, why, if we know God gives peace, and we know the enemy's a robber, do we still stand anxious? Okay? We're going to kind of just delve into that a bit further. So past mistakes can be things that hold us back from enjoying this present moment with God. Regrets. I should have done that. I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have done this. These things come into today, and instead of just enjoying the moment, hey, like I've got this new day to do it in, we're too busy replaying yesterday. My cousin, when we were younger, when we were about 11, she had this saying, and she loved it, and I, I always remembered it because of her, and it said, um, it was yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, um, and today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. And it sounds cheesy, but it's so true. Like, yesterday is history. You can't go back there. You can't. Nothing you can do. People write movies about time travel and stuff because everybody kind of wants to go back. And I tried to find the origin of that quote, and apparently it dates back to like 1225 and someone new is tagging their name to that quote every hundred years, it seems. And it's like, we live in 2018, that's over 800 years ago. 
that somebody was saying, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. Why? I bet you they were thinking about those things. I don't think that it's something that just our generation goes through. I think people, all generations throughout the years, have been thinking these same things. Living in the past, trying to move into the future, but they just like can't enjoy the present. And that is not what God wants for us. Because today's the day he made. Today's the day he made. And so, past hurts. You know, you might have been hurt by somebody in the past and like you've got people in front of you ready to love you, you can't accept it because of the past hurts. It's like you can't even live in the present and enjoy those things. Um, and this one's funny, it's in Ecclesiastes. He says, do not say, I wish I could go back to the good old days. That's not wise. So like, reminiscing even. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was for the other stuff, but I'll go. There it is. Don't long for the good old days. This is not wise. So even like, not even just like kind of looking back in the past in a gloomful way, but looking at it as in, that was way better then. And so you can't even enjoy now because it's like, but remember when we did this and we did that? And do you remember when so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that? And it's like, you're robbed of today because you're too busy comparing it to the good old days. You know, so that robs you of the present as well. God wants us to live in the here and now. And I think, you know, this scripture here, his mercy is new every morning. Like a lot of these scriptures that I'm going to use today, we've heard a hundred times. But the Bible says that the word of God is a lamp to my feet, which means that we walk in these things. So when we feel overwhelmed by past mistakes mistakes and regrets, if we've put it before the Lord, we can say, his mercy is new every morning. And I can live in this present time, in this present moment, and not take for granted what's before me. Because God has something for me today. And the future is another thing that robs us of today, thinking about the future. So, I mean, I think, you know, these things, it's not like I'm preaching them because I've never experienced them. Like, you know, I think all of us at some point in time have this fear of what's happening in the future. Like, what does tomorrow bring? What does next year bring? What does whatever bring? But today, it's robbing us of today. So... Jesus says this, so, you know, that saying I said was over, was dated back to 1225. These are words from Jesus over 2,000 years ago. And he's saying to the generation 2,000 years ago, do not worry about tomorrow. But tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So 2,000 years ago, people needed to hear this stuff. And I think now people need to hear this stuff. That God is telling us, Jesus is saying, don't worry about tomorrow. Focus on today. Be here. Be present. Right now, you're here. Are you here? Because another thing that can be taking you away is your mind. You could be looking at me. You're daydreaming. You think, oh, I'm hungry. I, I can't wait to get home. I wish it wasn't the preacher. Um, <laughs> where's Gary? Gary's in tighter, by the way. <laughs> Gary's in tighter. Um, you know, like, you, you can be present, but you're not present. You could be physically in a place, in a building, in an area with people, but you're not present. You're not with them. You're thinking about the next thing. And it robs you of your time with that person even. So our present, um, you know, when we're focusing on those stuff from the past, you know, and, and, and too concerned with everything, we forget that right here and now Jesus wants to talk with us and be with us and use us and, and love on us. And it, Hebrews 4.16 said, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So I think, I think, honestly, I think heaps of the things we worry about aren't even real. They're not real things. What do they think about me? Uh, you know, things like that. Oh, I wish I had a cooler outfit. Oh, I want to go back to the good old days when I was a size eight, you know? Um, <laughs> I just say what I think. No. <laughs> um, and I'm like, no, no, you're a size 14. It's great. Um, so... <laughs> You know, but like we've got to approach God's throne of grace because he wants to use us today. And I think that's what we had did, you know, and, and I was so encouraged by her. Like she said it felt better for her to have me there. And I was just like, I'm just like, oh, my gosh. I was just standing there. I didn't even say anything. The guy's like just receiving everything that I was saying. And I'm just standing there going, wow, this is awesome. Because I feel like sometimes I come off as like a Christian salesperson. Like, do you want to buy my Jesus? <laughs> like, he's so cool. But I was just like, man, you know, God is He's changed my life. And this guy's like, he was right there with her. He was present. He, he was like listening to everything she was saying. I'm listening to everything she was saying. Judah was even like kind of like, you know, just dancing around. But um, it was cool. And I was like, man, what a blessing for me to be there too. 
because it really encouraged me. So yeah. Um, okay, so here's the here's the one about others. Uh, I know a lot of the time we can be so concerned with what people think of us that we don't even want to live in the present time, you know, because we're so, I don't know why, we're in this little bubble in our head thinking that everybody's thinking about us. <laughs> um, they're probably not. They're probably thinking about themselves or maybe they're thinking what you think of them, you know, like, um, and that robs us of the current moment that God has given us as well. And, you know, Paul says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. You know, being a Christian, sometimes people just don't like you just because of that. Like, they don't even know you yet, and they already got their idea about you. Um, But the Bible says that we are the approved workmanship of God. And so when we are walking around trying to seek approval from people, we're never satisfied because someone out there won't like the way you do things. Someone just won't like it. And, you know, if we give them the power to say who we are, then we give them the power to say who we aren't. And God says that we are already approved. We are the approved workmanship of God. And so when we know that, we know that we live from approval, not for approval. And when you live from approval, that changes your whole outlook. Because you're not seeking for other people to fill you where God's filled you. You can just go and be present. Just be without having to need anything of anyone because God is your one who fills you. God fills you. So that can be one of those things as well. And, and busyness. I think busyness can rob us of today. And I'm not talking about, you know, the things that we have to do, but I'm talking about the things that we try to, like, sometimes take on that weren't ours to take on in the first place. Actually, years ago, we read this boundaries book with Adele's group, and she, you know, she brought out these two points, and I've always, they're stuck with me, and the book, we were doing boundaries with kids, but really, these principles just go over to um, adulthood as well, like, and I think it's important for us as adults to know that we can say yes and no to things. So, busyness. In Galatians 6, 5, he says, carry your own load. Okay, carry your own load, which means that God's given you stuff to carry. You're not going to go around this earth doing nothing, just like living in the presence, you know. Um, you've got a load to carry, and that's cool, because if God's given you the load to carry, he's given you the strength to carry it. But quite often, we take someone else's load on top of our load, and then we start feeling heavy, and we start feeling burdened, and we wonder why, because we think it's the Christian thing to do. Somebody's got a load, you've got a load, but you think, I'll help them. I will help them because I love them. Because I love my brother and sister in Christ, I will help them to carry their load. But all of a sudden, your arms start feeling heavy and your legs are weak. And you wonder why you're finding it hard to cope and walk anymore. Because you're picking up something that God didn't give you to carry. Because God says, each one must carry his own load. Like, you've got to carry what God's given you. And then there's another part here. And he says, carry each other's burdens. And this is Galatians 6 too. So how do we figure out what is somebody's load and what is somebody's burden? How do I figure out which one to help out in? I'll give you one example. One of our friends had a baby recently. And so to help her out through that season, to carry a burden with her, um, we arranged meals and we all gave meals for this person. So, <clears throat> so that during those first few weeks of having baby, they could enjoy their baby and we could carry that burden, take the burden off of them by saying, here, we've got dinner cooked for you, so they can enjoy the time with their baby. Now, trying to carry her load would be like, I'll come and raise your kids, you know? I will come and raise your kids to make it easier for you so you can sleep. But (laughs) we were not called to carry (laughs) that load. We're not called to raise the kids, but we are called to carry the burdens of each other, which is if it's really hard, I will make it easier for you in some way so that you can carry your load. And that gave her the ability to carry the load that the present day was giving her, because the newborn babies are demanding. I mean, they they just need you 24-7. So that's kind of the difference between carrying your own load and carrying each other's burdens, and I think we need God's wisdom to help us understand which is which sometimes, because sometimes we do think it's the Christian thing to help everybody, and it is. We're called to love and help, but we're not called to carry their load. And if they're giving that to you, then they're not loving you, you know? God's given us a load to carry, and we carry our own load but we carry each other's burdens. Um, 
Chuck Norris. I had to. <laughs> I looked up. <laughs> I looked up a thumbs up kind of like um, picture for the thing, and I saw Chuck Norris. This is I'm doing it. Um, just got to get in there. But <laughs> um, these are some things that help us to get through the day. You know, God saying He says, "But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today." Um, encouraging words are life giving, and like I think we've heard sermons on this from every angle. But an encouraging word can be just what somebody needs. And I think we've got to encourage everybody. And sometimes we think some people might need more encouragement than others, but everybody needs encouragement. Everybody needs encouragement. Your leaders need encouragement. Your pastors need encouragement. Um, If you, you know, want to say to your impact group leader, thank you for this year and the faithfulness that you've given all year or your pastor or even just your brother or sister in Christ. Like, if you've got something good to say about somebody, say it to them. You know, just say it to them because that might be the word they needed because we don't always know what people are going through. Um, That's in Hebrews 3.13. And if you're new here, our pastors like do Chuck Norris jokes, and they think they're awesome, so that's why the Chuck Norris was up there. Um, And we can be empowered. And you see this guy here, he's broken out of chains, right? When we've come to know Christ, we've set free from things. But along the course of time, sometimes we pick up a chain again, and we grab that old ball and chain, and we start dragging it again. And God's given us the power to let go of those chains. He said, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You've been free and then you go get back in the same old trap. But the power of God and the Holy Spirit and what God lets us do is he gives us the power to say yes to things that Christ has for us. And the power to say no to the ball and chain. I'm not going to carry the ball and chain anymore. I want to be free. I want to walk free. And you can. In Jesus' name. You can. And being ready. You know, one of the, I think, if we want to make the most out of life, we need to be ready daily for what God has. So, like, it's about letting the past go, not worrying about the future, being present. And being ready in the present time because, you know, whatever it is you're praying for today, when you reach tomorrow, that will then be today. And are you ready for that thing you prayed for yesterday to be answered today? You see, because when you could be praying about something for years, you'll be praying for that marriage to be restored, you'll be praying for your children to come back to the Lord, you'll be praying for whatever it is, and one day... God's going to answer that prayer. And when it comes to that day, that day will be today. And are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Because God responds to faith. You know, I've been praying for like five years now. I've been praying for five years and then it's today again. And here I am today again and I'm praying again. And And you think God in heaven is like, are you ready for what I'm going to give you? (laughs) Because I want to answer that prayer, but I want you to be ready for it. Because if you're not ready for it, I'm not going to give it to you yet. So be ready. Get ready, because God's going to answer that prayer you've been praying for five years. And all of a sudden, today, it's answered. Today, it will be answered. You know, and today might not be today, but tomorrow will be today. Do you see what I'm trying to say? We've got to live in the present. In the present, right now and here. You know, I was, you know, obviously, as I'm preparing for this, I'm thinking about it hard out. And I was just thinking, man... I had no idea that my today would look like this when I came here. Like, I didn't set out for this. I came because I needed God. And had no idea that this would be me today. (laughs) Sorry. And it's not like... This isn't the end goal, is to be up on stage preaching, but the end goal is, I think, in my life, what God's taken me through this year, I think it's like, it really is being present and enjoying what God has for you now, because one day it will be the good old days. And one day tomorrow will be the time you prayed for, and will you be able to enjoy it? Because, you know, 2,000 years ago, like I said, Jesus said these things to people, and now they're all dust in the ground. It's going to happen for us too. Enjoy today, enjoy the present day that God has given you, because he's made this day, he's given you the grace to be in this day. He wants to speak to you today, he wants to use you today, he wants you to have peace today. The devil wants to rob you. Anxiety does not come from God, you know? He says, do not be anxious about anything. 
And I've been anxious before, so I'm not saying, <laughs> you know, we still live in this place, but the Bible says, cast all your anxiety upon the Lord for he cares for you. And if today you are anxious, you don't have to fake it with God. You don't have to like try and use these scriptures and throw it at him like he doesn't know it. <laughs> oh, but you say I'm supposed to be this and you say I'm supposed to be that. And he's like, yeah, but I know right now you're not. Like you're not feeling okay. And that's okay. Today be present with God and what you're going through because he wants to be on the journey with you. You know? We've got no one else to... You know, God approves of us and he wants to be with us. And I think if we're living from that audience of one thing, we can really just be with God. Just be. Like, that's what living in the present is. It's being. Yeah. So being ready. This scripture, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. Proverbs twenty-one thirty-one. 31. Uh, this scripture played out in my life a few years ago. I was at home cleaning the house. I had my own children, and I would think I was looking after two other kids at the time. And um, I was just cleaning my house, walking around cleaning. I had some worship music on. It was another day. You know, it was just a normal day. Um, and the Holy Spirit puts the scripture on my heart, and I'm like, okay. And he's like, what does that mean? And I'm like, I don't know. And so for the next two hours as I'm cleaning the house, I'm like, the horse is prepared for battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. The horse is prepared for battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. I'm like, what does it mean? 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 And in the end, I came to this conclusion that with, has anyone watched the movie Braveheart? And you see in the movie Braveheart that they line up for battle and they're sitting on their horses and the horses are all just waiting and they're ready. And they're waiting on the command of the rider. And once that rider says go, the horse is ready to go. And God was like, are you ready? I'm like, wow. And so like I really got it. I was like, okay, so it's like we're the horse waiting. We just wait. We sit waiting there. We're ready. When, the, when God says go, you're ready to go. You're ready to move. When he says now, you're like, okay, I'm going because you're in position. You've got your armor on. You're ready. And the next part of that verse is, but the victory belongs to the Lord. So quite often times we think that, like, I'd love to pray for that person and see them get healed, but I don't know if I could do it, like, maybe they could do it because they're so awesome, but I don't think I could do it, but they're just a horse. All of us are just horses in this little battle, and we just need to be ready because the rider, which is God, is going to take the victory. So are you ready? That's the question. Are you ready today? Today. Because we just wait, we're just like these vessels, right? And God says, it's time to go, and you go. And so I had the scripture going on my mind, I'm thinking about it all day. God's revealing things to me through it. And then, you know, me and my kids, like it's a very mundane, typical day for me. It's just a day. But it's today for God. And so that day, I went with my children down to the center. I had to pay a bill at ANZ. I, <laughs> this looks like a bad mum, but I left the four of them in the car park right outside, because I parked right outside ANZ. And I ran in real quick, paid the bill, and came out. And I was heading up. And like I said, there's about three or four kids in the car. And um, there's this guy in front of me, and he's walking like this. And I was like, and I heard the Holy Spirit say car accident. But I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit at the time. I thought I was just going, is it, is it a car accident? Anyway, that scripture, that horse is ready for battle, but the victory is the Lord's. He's like, are you ready? I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I was just paying a bill with all the kids in the car, but I'm ready. Okay, I can't really, you know, it's one of those things where you get the revelation and, you, and you're so excited about it and then God says, action it, and you're like, all right. You know, like, I'm nervous right now, I'm scared right now, but I'm like, but I know the victory belongs to you. It doesn't belong to me. It's not about me going out there and healing someone. I don't do it, I'm just the horse. I was like, I'm just the horse and, and I'm here, so I guess I'm ready, God. You know, <laughs> it's a funny analogy, I know, but it's from the scripture, so we'll just go with it. Um, but victory belongs to the Lord, so I'm like, okay. And so I run up to this guy, and I'm like, hey, can I pray for you? And he's like, um, yeah. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, what do I do now? Like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Because um, I'm like, yeah, I'm not really the natural evangelist. I'm, I, I, I like the word of knowledge thing, because I can kind of go out, and it's like God's spirit going for me or whatever. But um, yeah, so I'm like, okay, can I pray for you? He says, yep. And then I overthought it, and I was like, oh, do you believe in Jesus? He's like, no. And, I'm, and I feel the Holy Spirit's just like, just pray for him. Like, I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> 
So I, so I reached out my hand, I closed my eyes because I'm nervous. I'm like, I don't want to see this. Like, you know, I'm kind of just being obedient. But, and I just started praying for him. And then I, when I opened my eyes, he's bawling his eyes out. And, and he said to me, it's, it's the third day he's been walking since his car accident. And I was like, wow. Like, you know, I'm in awe of God, like that he would use me, this little horse, you know. And it's like, wow, God. Um, and he was like, yeah, I had this car accident. And, so, and I thought he was going to come to this church or something. But, you know, my responsibility is to be that horse ready for battle, taking the victory out for God, you know. Wherever he ends up, he cannot deny that he encountered God that day. Like he did. You've got to be ready. And I, I think a lot of my experiences where I feel like God has used me has been at Pack and Save. <laughs> when I'm doing the groceries, it's been at A and Z. And it's been at Fantame shops, you know, like things like this. I remember I was at Pack and Save one time and I was talking to my sister's friend. I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? And she's like, good, yeah, I've got a sore shoulder. And I was like, oh, can I pray for it? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'd be healed. Okay, bless you, have a good day. I'm just going to get my shopping. And then months later, Sarah's like, yeah, so Debbie said you healed her. I was like, what? And I had forgotten all about it because it was kind of just like a, you know, I have faith in Jesus. You've got a sore shoulder. I'll pray for you, but I've got to keep going. And I never thought about it again. And, and Sarah's like, no, Jess didn't heal you. Jesus did. And she's like, no, it was Jess. And Sarah's like, Jess can't heal people. It's Jesus. And she was like, <laughs> and she was like, oh. And she kept saying it was Jess. And Sarah's like, it's not Jess. It's Jesus, you know. But like, and again, this person's encountered God. But when I try to be like, do you want to come to church? I'm so awkward. Not kidding. I'm like the most awkward evangelist ever. Excuse me. But like, <laughs> when I take the opportunities and I do it the way God's designed me to do it. Um, it's easier because I have a faith in God and I know that when I pray, you know, like I'm like, God can do what he can do. It's not about me. And so it's being ready today for what God wants to do. Even if it's just a mundane shop, shopping trip or you're going to pay a bill at ANZ, God wants to use you today if you're ready. If you're ready and it doesn't take a special Todd White or anything, you don't even have to be confident. Truth be told, you know, I have no confidence in the flesh. Like me and of myself, I'm awkward and <laughs> it's just not, easy for me, but me in the spirit, you know, my confidence is in the spirit of God, that's when things happen, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, um, one more time I was at Pack and Save, and I like, it was Christmas time, and we're walking around, and I had my shopping trolley, and this guy's got like two things in his shopping cart, and I had like this huge Christmas shop, because we're thinking about a family meal for all of us, you know, we had extended family, so when you do an extended family meal, you've got like heaps of food to get, and I see this family go past me, and there's like, a kid sitting in the trolley, and they had like two things, and I was like, oh my gosh, and I felt God's love for that person come over me, and I'm crying in the middle of the aisle, and he's like, give him some money, I'm like, okay, you know, but it's kind of like, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was ready, you know, and, and are you ready, like, you don't know what God wants to do in your life, maybe you've been praying for this answer for ages, but are you ready for the answer, because when God gives it, it's bigger than you thought, we're horses ready for battle. That's our position. We don't bring the victory. I didn't heal that person. Jesus did. You know? And so if we take that, I think, that weight and that pressure off ourselves in the current moment, like, can I do it? Do I? You can't do it. You can't do it. God can do it. And he wants to use you to do it. So, like, you're the horse. Be ready for the battle. Because God's going to bring the victory. Um. And I think this one here as well, like, you know, another thing that can rob us of being present in the present is, like, knowing how far you have to go on the journey. Like, you know, you just know that, like, there's so much before you. There's so much you haven't changed in yet. You know, it's like, oh, my gosh, I just, oh, I still need to change in this area and this area and this area. You know what the Bible says? It says, do not think too highly of yourself. And I think sometimes we think that means that we are like super confident and we think we're cool as and, you know, walk around like that. That's not what God's saying. He's saying don't think about yourself too much. We think about ourselves all the time. We're, we're, we're consumed in our thoughts thinking about ourselves. What am I going to eat? What, am I, what do people think of me? Like just, it's, it's like this constant thing going over in our minds. But God's like, he wants to give peace. That's a fruit of the Spirit. You know, fruit of the Spirit is peace peace. I came in here last Sunday and I had to get prayer because I didn't feel peace. And I left and I tell you what, this week it's just been like, even usually before I'm going to preach, I, I like I have this like busyness on the inside of me. 
But I just felt like solid, <laughs> solid peace. And I was like, God, I don't want to be too confident, you know, like, like that I'm getting up there preaching. I want you to show up. And he's like, I'm here. I've given you peace. Enjoy it. Relax. You know, that's not a natural state of mine. I'm one of those people that overthinks, you know. And it's like, yeah, it's good for Bible study. <laughs> but it's not good for other things, you know. Um, I'm on my way. To say to yourself today, I'm on my way. I'm not there yet. I've still got a whole journey before me, but I'm on my way. And this ties in with Gary's journey or the destination sermon. You know, are you enjoying the journey or are you just so focused on getting to the destination that you've missed the trees along the way and the roses and the cows and the paddocks, you know? You miss those horses on the way. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Quite often when I've read the scripture, and like I said, because I was an overthinking, anxious person in my walk, like this was like my word, my scripture for the first few years of my walk. I was like, forgetting what's behind, like calm down, don't think about it, don't stress. Like I would say to myself, forgetting what's behind, forgetting what's behind, and strange what's right here, just keep going. Like this would be my kind of like, you know, and this is a good part of that scripture too. But what I noticed this time was it says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. And this is written by Paul the Apostle, one of the guys we learned from, he martyred himself for the Lord. Like, I mean, he, he's like kind of like your up there kind of Christian person you'd look at and go, wow, I'm inspired, you know. And he even said, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Like, he's like, I'm not there yet. I'm not. But <laughs> I know that. I'm on my way. You know, we need to say, I'm on my way. And that gives us peace in this present time to just enjoy it. Yeah, we're never going to be finished. Like, as long as we're on this earth in this body, you know, there's going to be something we're working on, something God's talking to us about, something that doesn't reflect them is changing. But at the same time, there's going to be things that we've changed in. We can have peace that God's with us, and God's the one that does it. God's presence, this is our last slide, is the present I need the most. In the present... I can know God is present. And I can know who holds my future in their hands. The Proverbs 31 woman used to intimidate me. I did some study with Vivian on Wednesday, and she was like, Proverbs 31? And I was like, man. Like, I felt she was like this unattainable woman, like this woman who's just perfect in every way. But she wasn't. And in Proverbs 31, I'll go to it really quickly. Um, Psalm Proverbs, yeah. It's like the ABCs, are you like, Psalm Proverbs, like, where is it? Um, Proverbs 31. Um, it says that she is clothed with strength and dignity. And she can laugh at the days to come. What a precious thing to be able to do, eh? Like, just to know that, like, you can be strong. Like, I didn't have to be anxious about getting up here to preach today. It was okay to feel peace. Like, I was just like, is this the right God? Like, uh, am I being confident in myself? (laughs) But no, it wasn't. It was just peace from God. It was the inner peace because it was inside of me. I felt just, like, just stable. Like, and that's, that's the gift of God is to not have to be anxious on the inside and to not have to be overthinking up here. You know, to be able to enjoy this present moment that God has given you. And even as mums, you know, it can be so chaotic. It's a full-on day. Like, kids, kids, like, it's not easy raising kids. They need everything from you, and, you know, you need to get your full from somewhere, but sometimes you're, like, running on empty, like. But, you know, when I look back at the photos of my babies, I'm like, did that time go that quickly? Like, you know, my bubba was a little, little baby not, not, not so long ago, and now he's running around talking, and, like, he's, he's enrolled in kindy for next year, like, and, and, and without realizing it, the time is just going, and today has become tomorrow, and tomorrow has become the next day, and the next day has become the next week, and the gift of God is that we would be present today, that we would be able to enjoy today. You might not be where you think you should be there might be prophetic words spoken over your life and you're wondering when these things have come to pass but be ready today be ready today because when that thing comes it's going to be like whoa you know 
Because our God, he exceeds all our expectations when he shows up, when he's around. And I think the last thing I'm going to say is, you know, Jesus says a couple of things in the Bible about today. And in Hebrews, I think the writer, about three or four times, he says, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. You know, sometimes we can hear the voice of God, but I'm not ready yet. When will you be ready? Be ready today. Let your heart stay supple in the hands of God, for he is trustworthy. He will not hurt you. When you bring something to you, him, he won't hurt you. You know? So that's all I've got to say for today. So I hope that blesses somebody. Let's get on with the... Um, back to-